Hello, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. I'm here and we are starting the webinar just now. Okay. My name is Saraljit Singh. Just one second. I'm going to full screen. And now I'm sharing screen and I will start my program. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I am a senior citizen. And in this video, I'll be giving examples of myself as part of healthcare in society 5.0. So we are thankful to Kaidanan. They are the policy making institute in Japan who are in charge of society 5.0 healthcare. And I gratefully acknowledge user slides from their policy and action framework released on 20th March 2018 for public awareness and used by policymakers. Now, there's one thing I would like to say that when uh, they published this uh, document, the Average life expectancy in Japan was 73 years with very good health, extremely good health. Only after 73, their health started decreasing. Now, the objective of uh, Society 5.0 Healthcare is to keep raising the bar till people are healthy right up to the age of 100. Just imagine that. Oh. I'm having some problem with my settings again. Uh, so, there are more super seniors in Japan than elsewhere. The trend is towards a 100 year lifespan, as I just said. And Kedan Ren has developed a unique Japanese model of healthcare to achieve this 100 year lifespan. Post COVID 19, there has been remarkable progress in the tools and techniques used in society 5.0. Because COVID was a time when suddenly there was a step up in the use of technology and development of AI. And in one year, we achieved what we would have achieved in five years. So this, these are the trends in technology in healthcare. Advances in IT enables the digitization of information on human biometrics and physiological function, which means that, you know, the way the human system works, we are now able to analyze it and convert it into digital framework, both the physiological and the bio um, met, um, metric portion of it. 
This is generating an individual's personal health database. The whole objective is to generate everybody's individual health database. And advances in biochemistry, there is more elaborate spatial observation of biological forms and functions. Advances in IIT enables analysis of life forms as complex integrated systems. Okay, now this is interesting. This is the healthcare scenario in society 4.0. That means in a, a time before 2018. So this is how it worked. And everywhere, practically outside the smart cities, this is how it still works. You know, we have standardized care for median groups. You see this median group of, uh, you know, saffron colored people. So everything is decided uh, by the medical profession based on a general requirement. So there is, a, you know, there's no proactive care. What we do is that somebody gets sick, we have curative care. Then, of course, it's all standardized and it is led by the health provider, means the doctors and the nurses. You know, the other day I was talking to an old gentleman. I am 81. So I was talking to an 85 year old. And, you know, he had got a lens implant and he could not see from one eye. He was desperate. Will I lose my eye? I said, no, you know, uh, normally this uh, lens settles itself. But they call me today and say that, uh, you know, some major thing has been to be done. So I said, see, most of the process is automated and it's done by lasers. Don't worry. You, you will be okay. He says, okay, that's one point. But the real point is that the doctor I talked to was very impatient and rude. He, he did not even bother that I was uh, one that I was over 80. Sorry, there was some noise outside. So the doctor did not even bother to respect my age. That's what's more important to me. You know, we are six. A faith in which the older you get, the more respect people pay to you. So he was literally in tears. I sympathize with him. Now, you know, this is not the kind of health care we want, where the doctors do what they want and they are not bothered to tell you why they are doing it. Yeah, this is necessary. We have to do it. Now, after 2018, 20th March onwards, I would say, we are seeing the development of a new system in Japan, which we call Me Bio Care which is prevention. Now, me bio means early stage disease condition prior to appearance of systems. Means that uh, in me bio, you recognize the early stages of the symptoms and dip them in the bud. Yes, this is prevention. If you can prevent this from happening, you won't get really sick before, you know, you have to take some action. And then there is personalized care and active patient involvement. Personalized care means that you are treated as an individual and your individual individuality is taken into account when deciding what type of care you need, what are your nutrition 
presently and how they should be developed further or tweak to get you into good health right till you're old. And of course, very active patient involvement. Patient is the most important person because you're dealing with his body, you're tempering with his body, you have no business to be doing this. You have to have his concurrence and his total involvement so that there is this good transparent interaction between you two. And most of the cure happens because of how you treat the patient. Now, uh, on you see uh, these dark figures. On top, you see a figure where there is somebody, you know, who, who you see this arrow from standard care, standardized care for median group. This arrow goes to this visual where from the time a baby is born, here you see a toddler, it grows up, and then he's healthy. He was for around 73 years in 2018. After that, his health deteriorated. He walked around and then he died. Okay. Now, in me bio care, you see another arrow going from me bio care down. Uh, you are healthy right throughout. That is, you will be healthy till the age of 100 and you'll be healthy till the last days of your life and you will expire maybe in your sleep and you'll go to the grave but you'll enjoy good health right throughout imagine nobody would feel old people will say as i grow older i get more and more knowledge and that's how i feel actually and in fact I'm 81 and I've never had to visit a doctor other than a dentist ever. And now dentists, they take care of a teeth by putting implants. Uh, my dentist, uh, he's one of the best in the world amongst the 100 best. And he says that uh, now within 10 days, they can fit a complete set up and down. Earlier, just uh, two years ago, uh, you know, patients, I'm in uh, India, in Chandigarh, a city in Punjab. So he said that, you know, uh, people would come from uh, Canada and America to India to get uh, you know implants because here they pay about 10 percent of what they would pay in america and canada so they on the first trip they come and he uh, you know does the major surgery and plants uh, those uh, implants and they go away and they would come again after four to six months and then he would cap these. Now it can be done in 10 days. So they come, come stay here for 10, 15 days and the whole process is done. And he's got the amazing technology. You know, every 10 seconds, literally, while he's doing something uh, with your teeth or, or grinding, uh, he will take his uh, mobile extra unit and take a sh see, see what's happening or take a shot and go on the screen and he show show to the patient also oh look this thing's happening okay so don't worry we are we are in the right route and he'll go on and on and give you the best possible job that's why he's amongst the 100 best in the world although he's in the backwaters, literally, because we are in India. But he is a, you know, eminent professor, and dentistry, dentistry is his passion, and he has a super clinic here. Okay, so now this is the kind of care that he takes. Now look at another, you know, 
person who specializes who specializes in implants so when you go to him you see the difference now if my dentist even if he has if you say oh i don't want implants but you take this teeth out that is bad just nothing can be done everything is destroyed even the root is not there we can't even do root canal take it out so if he takes out the tooth he will sew the gum he happens to be a specialist in uh, you know the treatment of gums also so he'll sew it and the patient he say okay come back after 3 days take uh, and he'll he'll give some anti inflammatory medicine that's all uh, come back in 3 days and we'll uh, uh, i'll remove the stitches and see whether everything's okay now when i asked him why do you do this i have not seen other dentists who do this they just take out the tooth and say okay now you're fine you know just just don't have something for today and maybe tomorrow you'll be all right and they never come back and uh, you know they have all fuzzy gums also gums uh, he says that uh, when we stitch you won't even know that a tooth existed there and that's a fact simply to save time some dentist will simply pull out your tooth say okay here's a, in in dollar terms it would be 2 and 1/2 dollars fine next so he's taken only 10 minutes whereas my dentist takes an hour to do the job well because even before pulling out the tooth he will take an x ray and decide which is the direction and the force with which the tooth should come out he said the direction in which you pull a tooth out is more important than anything else okay fine so that is what actually society 5.0 healthcare is all about and i told my dad why do i hope you come and see this uh, presentation of mine because uh, you and your wife she's a gynecologist you will know that you are the best and you're already there in me by the now what is me by okay so then you know every persons you know the person in the uh, red the t-shirt say here his personal data is captured throughout life and converted into a personal document stored in cyberspace now imagine this is done say in singapore and in japan for every single person today and every single individual is treated like he is just the one person who has to be taken care of in the way he his uh, you know life progressed from birth till now see what changes happened why they happened things like that you we'll see them again so this is me bio healthcare okay so me bio care this is not the data inputs uh, that you know you see that uh, cyberspace thing so this is the da- data that they capture you know the physical activity that you go through you know why exercises you do things like that then type of allergens and uh, their effects these are captured across life sometimes uh, you know you are allergic to something but after say 3 4 years it goes away or after 10 years when i was young i had uh, hay fever i was uh, allergic to uh, pine needles and things like that but then suddenly after maybe 5 6 years it just went away i got my body got used to it so all that type of information is required and some people are allergic to milk some to whatever okay so then there is a sensitization profile uh, which is created which medicines antibiotics things like that suit you do not suit you what happens then the individual threshold dose that's very important today everybody gets a standardized dose 
for unknown reasons. So some people require a very small amount of it. Some people require a very large dose for reasons which we have not been studying in detail, but now they are being studied through, uh, you know, everything studied through a blood sample. Now that's, and they are uh, going to that. This is an advanced society. We'll, I'll come to that, okay? Now, then there are dietary habits and preferences. All these, so these are your personal nutritional plan that is stored for life. Now, uh, we'll come to this, this uh, generated values. So, how we have, you know, your data about, uh, you know, which is captured and things like that, as we talked about. So, the idea is to move from this, where you, when you get old, you get sick to a time when you are never going to be old till you die at the age of 100 or so. And so this is, you know, in the, today, there are shorter periods of poor health as you, as the time passes, say in 2008, you had 73 years as shown here. And in 2016, uh, this moved slightly to 74. Oh, sorry, that this is that 2008. It was, it was 73. Here it was 71 in 2001. In 2001, it was 71. In 2016, it was around 73. This is for Japan. Okay. Now, what they are doing is. Uh, Yes, they want this to increase sharply, not a slow level, you know. A slow level, it happens in nature because, you know, people are, people live healthier lives and things like that. The environment is better, but the environment is not getting better anymore and it would become worse if society uh, 5.0 healthcare was not there. It would actually get very, very bad. It would come down drastically because of the you know, the stress that uh, this environmental pollution and the kind of food we have to eat where food is available. Food is also getting scarce across the globe. But they say that no matter, we are going to increase it substantially and go high towards 84, then 100. Okay? So... Then uh, the, this they show the you know the market for uh, uh, s uh, s uh, development of such products, so the improved quality of life, and you know by, what they want to do is to minimize the incidence of severity of disease and optimize medical expenses, and demonstrate a world-leading success in the field. In Japan, promote social system application overseas and cultivate health here as a growth industry. And so this is the industry, how it will grow, just to, you know, spread the word across the globe. Now, uh, Japan has made an action plan. Kedan Ren, who are the policy and action group, they have made a four-part action plan, which we'll go through now. The first is collection, linkage, and use of life course data. This is a major step, the digitization of the individual. The second step is, you know, expand innovation and advances in biotech. So this is what is seen as the objective is unraveling mechanisms of the human body. You know, the mechanisms of the human body are not just the physiology. 
most of this happens to be connected to the nervous system. You know, the brain, it produces chemicals. We can call them the things like, you know, in general, they said this, this is a disharmony it is producing. But in studies, they see that there are millions of different types of hormones the brain is actually producing to effectively cure the human body. Remember, human body is the worst designed of all the apes. And we are Homo sapiens, are the only apes of which we have only one species left. All other apes have many other species. Maybe, say gorillas, they probably have 15, 20 species of gorillas. Chimpanzees also have three, four types. You know, Bobono happens to be one, one of, a, also a chimpanzee. So, every other species has multiple other subspecies. Bacteria may have millions of species. Even viruses have many species of the same variety. So, for some unknown reason, only one species of human has been left. The last species that went extinct maybe about 40,000 years ago is the Neanderthals. But why they went extinct? Now, this is being studied in detail. One of the reasons is that the humans, because of shortage of food, the humans uh, kill them off because, you know, they, th these two species fought for scarce food. They are like scavengers who get the la last, or the last to eat, who survive on, you know, small, small uh, rodents and things like that. The other thing, uh, other, other theory is that the Neanderthals lived in the north and uh, during the last ice age, which coincides uh, with their last seen habitats. And they just could not survive because uh, we are hairless apes, totally exposed to heat and cold. And we are very sensitive to it. Other species are not so sensitive to heat and cold. So now let us look at the, we saw those four, okay, so let's like, so go back and one second. So now we look at unraveling the mechanisms of the human body, okay? You have seen the uh, collection of data to some extent in when we talked about uh, me bio. So in me bio, it has uh, two parts, you know. Say, you see this lady, she said, my skin color does not define me. I myself define myself. That is me. And uh, bio is personal data about you, eh? which is used to keep you happy and healthy. So that's how me bio is, a, is the, uh, this thing defined. And you know, here, how do we collect linkage and use life course data? So we collect through widened use of genomic tests, expanded health exam checklists, utilization of variable device, devices, digitization and standardization of medical and care data. Now, this is a mouthful, okay? So, genomic tests. What are genomic tests? So, you know, our DNA has, each DNA has, you know, chromosomes. The two variety of chromosomes are there which, um, you know, 
make it very complicated. You see a spiral with a two, uh, you know, of these uh, uh, genomes uh, up there. And surprisingly, you know, the human body out of all the DNA it has got a huge, huge part of it. Only one and a half percent is actually used, not by humans, by all species or not, only one and a half percent. This I'm talking even about trees and things, like all flora and fauna. So only, you know, one and a half percent of this is used. The balance, 98.5 percent, is just, you know, junk sort of thing, which is still kept in store. You know, we do not know when we'll need to look at that and uh, redesign ourselves. That's what the brain is uh, you know, probably working like. But uh, we could have saved a lo lot of space by throwing that out. But that's not how nature works. It wants to keep improving itself by even going back and seeing the mistakes it made and how those mistakes can be now corrected by tweaking the genomes, the genes. And then, the, well, you know, some scientists have actually discovered this and seen it, that they remove one of those uh, uh, genomes from the scrap heap, tweak it and uh, implant it in our current system in the one and a half percent. And presto, that particular species, species where it is done, it develops to take care of itself in a difficult environment. So, and then there is a utilization of variable devices. Well, the, the, it has recently been revealed that, you know, because of uh, GPT-5, the variable devices will be able to see inside you as well as outside you what's happening but of course the humans will not be able to see this when these variables are a part of a robo a robo standing next to a physician and looking at the patients even when the patient is showing himself in on his uh, mobile phone you know no, they, they are do, doing it, this thing, live chat. So within an instant, the robo will give all information about what's happening inside the person's body and outside, just by looking at it. I don't know how uh, this is actually uh, what quantum computing is going to be doing and already uh, you say in Singapore and Japan and Germany, China, America, even even uh, Canada, uh, they are they have uh, quantum computers. Now chips have been created for uh, society 5.0 healthcare which will create this type of diagnosis. Well, this will actually totally flip the system. And instead of society 5.0 healthcare, we will be saying society 6.0 healthcare. Okay. So then you collect the data and <coughs> you while collecting it, you do digitization and standardization of medical and care data for each individual and for each community and for each region of the globe. So individual data is important, community data is important, community, community data would be, say, uh, you know, in a small part of uh, the city that people are living in a society where there are about uh, 500 people. So they would collect data from all these 500 people. And 
the quantum computing system. We'll see that how this community is different from another similar community just uh, two miles away. And of course, it will tell them why it is different. And so the community which is suffering because of something, they'll be told, okay, yeah, I think you have to, let's, uh, find, uh, this is what is a finding. Now let's see how we can improve it so that you are happier. The focus is on everybody should be happy, you're happier. Say so Singapore prides itself on ensuring that all its citizens are happy. Because since uh, 2013 till 2022, when last polled, Singapore was the most um, um, admired and number one society, 5.0 smart city in the world, consecutively for all these years, you know. And who polls for, uh, who is the best? Nobody from outside polls, you know. The citizens of the city themselves poll on various parameters and all smart cities poll on the same parameters. And then they decide, oh, people in this city are the happiest. This is the number of points they got and they are the happiest. This is second. That happens to be Geneva at present, then Copenhagen third. So this is how they decide. If you are very happy, then you are living in a good environment, in a good place. Okay. Now then, uh, development of personal data linked IDs, uh, individual data. Okay. So. Then uh, you have healthcare data platform. Sorry. You have healthcare data platform development, open access to N N N D B. Now what is N D B? N D B is as you see here, it is national database. Okay. The E H R there P D S and medical blockchains development of E H R. PHR. So what this means, is, uh, you know, is given at the bottom. EHR, electronic health record. PHR is personal health record. Now, I'll be uploading uh, this talk one hour after we are finished. And then you can download this whole thing. You don't have to call, uh, you know, uh, know what this is. It's all written here. For you to see. Now, then we have uh, the number two initiative, which is unraveling mechanisms of the human body, promotion of cohort studies. So, cohort studies, what these are, is given here below. Cohort studies are typically long term studies that examine correlations between risk factors and the health status of individuals belonging to a specific group, okay? They are long-term studies of the, that examine correlations between risk factors and the health status of individuals belonging in a specific group. So when you know this correlation, you know what to do about it, okay? Then there is perform a uh, promotion of micro uh, microbiome research. This is what I'm talking about. This is the key to health, really. So what is a, a my, microbiome? Microbiome research examines correlation between disease and microorganisms that inhabit the human body. You know, 50% of our body weight is the bacteria that inhabit us. And they determine our health. They keep us alive most of the time. They're designed to do that. These are the good bacteria. 
uh, if the good bacteria are overpowered by the back, bad bacteria, then you will have trouble. You know, that the, uh, one of the reasons I have uh, got to keep healthy is uh, because I take food which helps the gut's good bacteria. I take chia seeds, one spoon of it, one tablespoonful in the morning with water, plain chia seed with water early morning. What chia seeds does is that it goes directly through the system to the colon, the small gut, which is only five feet. And where the finally the juice of everything, you know, that uh, the food has churned, the, you know, churned the itself into and created a juice out of which energy and nutrients are absorbed by it. So those bacteria take this out. And if they are unable to do this, uh, you know, there'll be adverse symptoms like, you know, diarrhea and um, uh, even no matter how much food you eat, you will feel sickly, a lot of things. And if these bacteria are not healthy, even the gut may get punctured. You know, the wall there, these bacteria somehow keep the wall healthy. I don't know how it is done. Uh, one day, maybe we'll know. So then if this wall is not punctured, you'll be healthy. But if this wall gets punctured, that is ulcerated, uh, there are very good chances of death. Then there is uh, another thing uh, called flaxseed. So this is what the small intestine uses. It has a lot of bacteria in it. And the small intestine, you know, must be able to digest the food. So these bacteria which live there, you know, in intense uh, uh, hydrochloric acid environment, and they survive because of this, because they are, because of, you know, uh, the mu mucus that we produce, we produce it for them. So, if when these bacteria are fed flax seed, they grow very healthy and digest the food the way it should be digested. It takes 24 hours to digest the food here. And just five hours, if some food is not digested properly, then that food is stored separately in the colon and digested in the rest five hours. Okay. So, if the gut is small, gut is healthy. The big gut is healthy. You will always be healthy. The liver also will be healthy. So all these things are connected together. Okay. So this is what we are saying that we promotion of microbiome research. Okay. This examines correlation between disease and microbes that inhabit the human body. Now, the third step is development and expansion of new healthcare services. Well, this is something that has been not easy to develop. But in Japan and Singapore, the pharmaceutical companies and researchers have been kind. They have foregone profits on patents and things like that, and secrecy with which we, they, you know, uh, develop uh, different medicines and things like that, and sell them at huge profits. So the next generation me medicine, what is this? We, the depth of this is the provision of personalized medicine, regenerative medicine, and other advanced medical approaches, as well as digital th therapy, liquid biopsies, and other new forms of care. Okay, now this is okay, accepting for that uh, liquid biopsies. So what are liquid biopsies? These are diagnostic screenings that can detect minute levels of cancer DNA 
in blood samples. Imagine this is at a stage, a very, very early stage. And if these cancer cells are eliminated at this stage, you'll, a person would never ever get cancer. Cancer would be a thing of the past. So, great deal of research is being done in liquid biopsies. You just take a small blood sample, and it will tell you everything about that individual. And you can cure him there. What more do you want? Oh, this is happening. And then second part, where I was saying that uh, difficult to get, uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies and researchers to get together. This is the scope. That was the depth and this is the scope. So a scope is services coordinated by private firms, local government and hospital institutions to develop personal health programs and provide pre-symptomatic care and preventive support. So this is something which, you know, the, these are the two dimensions. And when these work together, there is very good health care in society 5.0. Now, the fourth part is healthcare ecosystem design. This has four parts to it. Two, the promotion of open innovation. Open innovation is extensive in uh, Japan. All university professors get together and discuss things and help each other from different universities, from different labs. They don't hide anything from anybody. They want to improve, improve themselves. And then when they talk to somebody, both of them improve. And the most respected people in Japan happen to be teachers and professors and researchers. They, they are considered to be out of the world. And the reason for Japan being Japan the best in the world, as they say. Okay, and then a study of institutional frameworks for healthcare system, which main part is promotion of functional differ differentiation at the community level. Okay, as I talked now, you study community to community and see the differences and, you know, functions between them and you learn more and more how to you know, help each community be the best it, it is. Then third is cultivation of human resources for ecosystem support. Okay, so new learning opportunities are there for physicians gain in personal literacy of IT and medicine. Hmm? So when we involve, you know, uh, uh, physicians and other researchers in this field, there is a lot of gain for them, a lot of gain for them, and a lot of gain for the community. They will learn more and more and become better and better. Like I stopped giving an example of my uh, dentist. The more he learns, the more enthusiastic he gets. He goes all over the world attending conferences and giving lectures. And he says, I give lectures only because when, I, when I, I, I'm, I'm one of the invited uh, lecturers, after my lecture, I had constructed in such a way that after the lecture, people come to me and give me more and more ideas and they want to learn from me. And in return, when I talk to them, I, in fact, learn 10 times more from them. And he finds uh, Thailand to be very good at this. So they, he says their physicians and dentists are out of the world. I said, but it's a, it's a developing country. Oh, it may be a developing country, but it is a highly developing developed country from medical research and you know the competency of the doctors and nurses there now fourth is stronger coordination amongst government command centers ministries and agencies so unless there is coordination with all people in power people with money 
and uh, agencies like the you know you i know uh, things can't be done currently uno has taken the lead in uh, you know uh, in with its 17 initiatives of which health and well being happens to be a important most important need So uh, that's what, what we had. And I have put this slide, biotechnology. And biotechnology is the real focus. And with biotechnology, we are going to be ahead of the curve. Now my closing remarks are, I'll just summarize what I talked about. And I have been doing it very slowly and casually, very, you know, very personally. I don't want to sound pedantic. I want you to get something out of it. And in the Q&A, ask me questions so that I improve. When you ask me questions and I don't know the answer, that will be the ultimate. Okay? Because then I'll go all out and find answers. And whoever asks me the question, I'll give him all the data on what I gather, okay? Now, Society 5.0 is totally human-centered. And in this, the focus is on me, bio, healthcare, and nutrition. They're both together. Me, bio, healthcare, and nutrition go together. If you separate either one of them, it doesn't work. They are part and parcel of each other. Me, bio, and nutrition. Then focus is on hyper-aging wellness, Longer periods of good health, life course care for chronically ill patients. You know, if you're chronically ill, then they have to find individualized cure for you and keep you well and as happy as possible during your period. Say you you, you got cancer at the age of seven, and they will treat you and take care of everything to ensure that you get as happy a life as you can hereafter. The con cancer is controlled, doesn't reappear, doesn't cause more trouble. Your mind is uh, in the right stage. Your family is happy. You're happy. Happiness is everything. And, you know, so this life course care for chronically ill patients because all families will have something chronically wrong with somebody or the other once in a while. So if you do not take care of this, nobody in the family will be happy as, they, as happy as they can be. Then healthcare ecosystem design, the promotion of open innovation, that's the key than intensive training of healthcare providers. Unless healthcare providers are trained and retrained again and again, they cannot keep up with the advances that are happening and treat the patient the way they should be treated and keep the patients happy, listen to the patients. So, now we are at the end of it and thank you very much. And, you know, uh, this picture was specially put by me. It shows these people have come to a clinic and are waiting to see the doctor. So meanwhile, this rover nurse comes out and uh, she has got this uh, sign kind of thing. And she says, you are so and so. The doctor's, doctor's listening inside to what, what is happening here on this uh, iPad and when uh, the robot is talking to her, I say intelligent robot, uh, she gives him all the details. So when the patient goes in, 90% of the diagnosis is already done. So only the final thing has to be done. So this is today with GPT-5, which is just one year away, I'm sure, not more than that when we would have crossed the, uh, the line of uh, 
artificial intelligence you know being now the reality uh, when a robot like this simply looks at a person as i said it will know everything that is happening inside and out and it will simply ask a few two three four questions reading the person's mind literally reading the person's mind and knowing whether the person is being truthful or not so but it will not comment of course oh no you lied or something they don't uh, healthcare people not supposed to say that so uh, then 100% of the diagnosis done here and the patient probably goes in to see the healthcare provider for assurance and to discuss a few more things so we will end the program here and now is a question hour so please uh, put your questions in the uh, chat mode or in q and a section i have put it in the chat mode because some people may not find the q and a section just in the chat put q and put the question uh, don't put your name is best to keep things anonymous and i will not say who gave that question okay so i will now end here So just take take a minute, and then uh, we will take uh, take your questions. Okay. So now we are open for chat. I open the chat screen. Please put in your questions. <clears throat> so while uh, people are thinking about uh, their questions. I'll ask one thing. What more should I have talked about? Just put in a reply.
Okay, fine. It appears that uh, there are no questions. In which case, uh, let's end the meeting. And you can write to me. And uh, we'll share again. In the even evening at uh, 7 p.m., I'm going to have another webinar, this time on the framework of Society 5.0 Smart Cities. The framework of a cities is important for planners who plan, strategize, design, and then develop a smart city or any part of it. So those of you who are thinking of careers in smart cities or are already working on smart city projects, I suggest you come and join me at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time, right here. This next session will be open to all the public. So any number of people can join, not just 300 as stipulated by uh, this thing, me this time, because of uh, Zoom uh, restrictions. Thank you, everybody.